out there and, and stake your claim and go, look, man, you know, this is what, what we're about, this is what we're going to do. And, and I respect anybody that does anything in this business because this business is a fucked up business. Yeah. You know, it, it, it really is. And it's, you know, when, when people look at it from the outside, they go, this is fucking great. You know, but, but in the end, at the end of the day, like, you wind up loving it as much as you hate it. And that's, you know, the biggest struggle is like, that's really to me, it's, it's you know, I, I say, well, is it really all worth it? Because there are some shows you'll, you'll do very well on, there are some fucking shows you won't. You know, and it's like, and to me, it's a 24 hour thing. It's, I can't, if I'm gonna do something, I can't do it that bad. Well, and that's, like, nothing's worth doing if you don't do it right. That's my philosophy. Uh, that's you know, an Irish. We, uh, so we, we moved uh, forward. I think the product, some, some aspects of it is edgier. Um, but I, I, I love all the Indies. I mean, I love what Warriors does. Um, they have their own brand. I enjoy the product that JTW has. I enjoy uh, different aspects of ECPW. I enjoy different aspects of every. You know, and I don't watch, uh, you know, the, the, the network or, or the Raw or any of that shit. Really, I just take a look at the Indies and what going on out there. I'm a big fan of even the pro wrestling syndicate does of what they've done with pro wrestling on the Indies. I mean, you know, that, that's 100% the truth. That's a shoot. Big fan. I, I actually, I like the network. It's be, uh, because it just brings me back to childhood when basically. I was a kid and it's when I started loving it. You know what I'm saying? So, I just I think everybody has the network and yeah. for for different reasons. If I get to watch WrestleMania one and it makes me feel like a you know a ten year old kid for for three hours, then damn it, I want to be a ten year old kid for three hours. <laughs> and then you come to Bayville, New Jersey, you see Nikolai Volkov's tits. So holy shit, it's not twenty years ago anymore. No, it's exactly. not. I mean, when he's able to tuck his his breasts into his tights, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But I still loved oh, yeah. it. I did still love it. I he gave me a good interview, a real good, honest interview, and um, I, I commend him for that. I got a good one, a really, really good one with Shane Douglas, and uh, you know, and and that's what I like. I like coming to your shows, and you, you open it up for us. You know, we're able to run around and you know uh, cover the show, get some interviews, say hello to you guys, and you guys are all respectful. They all come up to us and say hello when we get there, and. It's it's you got a you know, you got a nice family and I just you know we, you know, wish you you know the luck keeping it going and and just continue on on the good streak you know you got a hot streak going so it's you keep know it going, yeah. keep it going it's anything it's like you know just like just like being on a good baseball it's just like you know you're on a hitting streak just just keep it going one one at bat at a time and that's the thing you got to worry about a show at a time and, and my biggest thing is you know. And I don't know how the other independents are, but you know, our fucking pre sales are never huge. We don't, I can't sit there and go, oh my God, we have 130, 140 pre sales. We never do. A lot of our business is done off the gate. A lot of our business is done off of that. I mean, we have different marketing aspects that other people don't use. I mean, I'm still a firm believer in flyering everything on God's pre You know, and, and I, I, my background wasn't always in wrestling, it was in sales, and banking, and management. And, Know, so it's, I try to use different aspects of that to, mm-hmm. to, 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 into, into this company. To, you know, but at times, you know, it, it's it's a, a difficult thing. You're never going to make everybody happy. Somebody's always going to have something to say, and I like I don't I don't really pay attention to any of the negativity. I just I don't give a fuck. I mean, at the end of the day, there's a real life in this world, and everybody you know, that life has a time limit. And you just got to go out with the most awesome life you possibly can. And, if it was if it was over now and all of it was done, Superstar Wrestling was gone, and you know, I decided, fuck it, I'm done. I could say that I I did everything I really ever wanted to do. I mean, I, I got out there and performed, and I was able to bring a show to different parts of of New Jersey. And but but I'm not ready to do that yet. I'm, there's still a hell of a lot more we have planned and to do, and it's eventually coming into New York. There's a lot of things coming for, for Superstar Brand. But it's just the timing and making sure that it's the right time to speak. And one thing I did see that you got involved in, which I have to commend you for, um, CTW Wrestling, uh, the charity, a uh, charity-based company uh, that's putting on a show in April in uh, the Days Inn in Bridgewater. I see that you got involved uh, as a company with them, supporting them, and um, I got to come uh, commend you on that because a lot of companies would. Uh, 
kind of feel that even though it's a charity event, it's competition, and you know you don't want you don't you don't want to be competing with with somebody else, another company. But well, who's not great, man? Colin's been awesome with me. I mean, when he first told me about what he was planning on doing, I I opened up the Olive Branch to Rip to come and, and you know, whatever he needs to sell tickets on show or put a show over. But I I think that competition's good. I think that what he's doing is is great. Mm-hmm. Um, the fact that you know, I know how hard it is to put together a product. Uh, for him to get out there and do that is awesome. I have a lot of friends on that show, and you know, I'm looking forward to, to checking out the show. And I would, and I, I'm a big supporter of what they're doing. That like said, everybody. Yeah, on that well, I definitely got to commend you on that because you know a lot of a lot of uh, promoters probably wouldn't have, and you know, it, and it, it's kind of sad because you know, it's it's for charity, and you know, I told him I hope he doesn't have to deal with that nonsense of people ripping down posters and and uh, you know telling people that the event is canceled and all that other nonsense that many of the other independent companies have had to deal with. You know, it's it's charity. I'm like, how do you rip down a poster of? Uh, an event that's being held for sick children, you know, like exactly. it's for cystic fibrosis. Like, how how are you going to rip down a poster? I'm like, it just, I, I don't. A lot, a lot of, yeah, you know, that's a, big, a lot of people don't they don't give a fuck. I mean, we did a show May second last year for Salvatore, uh, a little child at heart surgery. He did a scars chat, and everybody thought that was the work too. People will just go out there and say what they want to do, say what they want to say, believe what they want to believe, and try to hurt something else. But at the end of the day, for they're hurting more than just the business. What they're doing is they're hurting something that's legitimate and people that actually do need the help. Right. And, you know, I take my hat off of what they're doing. I think it's really great. It's a great cause, and they got a hell of a show. I agree. I, I hope it goes off. I hope they're able to continue and do other shows for um, maybe not only for cystic fibrosis, you know, just maybe for like leukemia or child cancer and, you know, just other things that they... Um, you know, it's unfortunate that we have to lose somebody to have a charity organ a charity thing done. So, for them to do it just for the simple fact of raising money for cystic fibrosis, I, it's very commendable. You know, one of the things too, I mean, I, I, one of the things I wanted to, you know, I, I'll say it here, something I've been kicking around was something for, you know, uh, Kim Arson. Right. You know, who passed away. It was a huge part of my company and just a great personal friend of mine and, and you know the ECW zombie whatever gimmick he used I mean he was such a, a an awesome guy to be around and you know I had talked to him a few days before he died about you know just booking and just how life's going and, and all that stuff and, and then he called me back again and I didn't get the, the voice to him after he passed away and in the message he had said to me that you know life's too short old grudges that you know you have to just be happy in life. And I never knew what that message even was about, but it's kind of cryptic. And it's uh, something I want, really want to do for, for his family who I've known a long time is just get out there and do a, a show for him, for his honor, and for his memory. I think that would be great. Pat, oh, I, don't think it, I, I know we did this half hour salute, but honestly, I don't think that's enough. No, I really don't. I can see a lot of his ECW brethren wanting to be part of that show. I mean, 100%, and he was, a lot of people don't know, they look at the character and the gimmick, and they don't know how much he hated the gimmick. He was smart enough to know the gimmick made money. You know, he would sell pictures with the gimmick, and, and he could put that as the gimmick, but I know the guy that I, you know, two years ago when I broke into the business, I wound up going to Puerto Rico, I became a real big name up there, made some money, uh, you know, went up and did the work for WWE, and, and you know, I mean, it just fucking sucks. It just sucks, man. <laughs> but uh, what do you mean? Wait, w, you you talk, you're saying WWE gave him a really bad gimmick? You, you really? They well, never you know, they never do that. <laughs> it was uh, I, I remember talking to him when he had that tryout match with him and Matt Stryker, and uh, so the next night he was uh, you know, christened the zombie. W and um, uh, <laughs> and then he got squashed by the Sandman. <laughs> one of my close friends, uh, Jason Calabrese, who worked up at you know, the D three D School of Florida, wrestled with Jason Static, not to fix it now. He was there when Tim got the opportunity, and um, you know, Timmy just was smart enough to know that when he came back to New York, New Jersey, he 
you know, it would, it would be hot out there. I think PW Best was the first people to use it, if I'm right. Yeah, I think so. So, uh, he's missed, man. He's just, he's really missed. As a human being, more than anything, for me, I mean, he's just really missed. Well, this this leads me to my next question because you said that he left you a voicemail um, stating, you know, don't hold grudges uh, to get over things, and and then you also brought up, you know, PWS used um, Zombie first in the indie level. You used him as well, and this kind of leads to my question: Did that voicemail? kind of change your your feelings and the you know the way you think regarding PWS um, business to business well I mean to be completely honest with you I think that the voice of is really quick um, as far as the you know don't hold grudges life's too short and you know you kinda it, it's something that's stuck in your head and, you know I think in retrospect uh, I've made a lot of mistakes you know, I had a work relationship with uh, PWS. I think um, I bit off more than I could chew at that time. And I think, you know, in retrospect, a lot of ideas. I mean, running the Runway Rec Center was a bad fucking idea. Mm-hmm. You know, I take responsibility to that. But, you know, I uh, I have a lot of friends there, too. You know, that, that, that work for those guys. And, you know, I didn't have any conversation, really, for a long time with, with anybody from, from them. And uh, recently that changed. And, you know, I think Kurt Hawkins coming to work with Superstars really was a, a, really a change in the in a lot of the, the emotions and the, the sort of apologies, you know, from me to them and just let's fucking move forward. And whether that's, you know, any kind of, uh, whether it's a business arrangement like a ring rental or it's, uh, you know, maybe the opportunity to have some of the new kids they got on our shows. I always, oh, I'm open to give opportunity to anybody. and. You know, and how hard it was for me to get a book when I started it. But I, I don't have any heat with anybody. Uh, I don't, uh, I think what they've done for independent professional wrestling is fucking awesome. Everybody will have their critics, but I mean, you, you can't take away the fact that they've worked hard at what they do. And they've become a, a fucking monster at the East Coast, and I think it's really great. I mean, so I'm a full supporter of everything everybody does. So I have no heat with anybody. I'm really, uh, in retrospect, I made a lot of bad decisions, but, uh, you know, it's fucking life. You move forward, you move on. No, there's no grudges anywhere, and that's a good thing. Okay. Um, Do you have anything you'd like to say to any of the people who uh, run, moderate, or support the Facebook page, um, Bad Wrestlers Exposed? They could suck me off. That's what I'm like. Point blank. Sounds you know, pretty cool. I, 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 don't, I don't go on their page. People send me some snapshots. And, and it's like, you know, a lot of it's comical. You know, I see pictures of me in face paint. If it's some uh, old guy a blowjob or, uh, you know, uh, there's, there's a picture of me circulating with my ass, you know, my white ass, my damn body that's out there. But, you know, I just think it's fucking, it, it, these are guys that, it's just funny to me. I, I don't know who the fuck it is. I don't even care who it is. A lot of it I find comical. I mean, some of the shit they put on there is correct. I mean, you know, I watch some, some of the stuff they draw on there makes me laugh. But even the stuff about me, like, there's some stuff that's just like, you know, you're at a show, you're taking pictures of a fucking certain row of ringside that is, you know, only 20 chairs for the fire bars. And you're like, yeah, very true. Fucking 19 people tonight. Yeah, that's not know. true. You know, that, 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 that kind of shit that annoys me when they're like, hey, you know, uh, Fury, uh, Fury shouldn't, uh, you know, book so-and-so or this or that or... It just look, man. Everybody's got to start somewhere. Nobody's going to go out there and be written a fucking dragon steamboat. You know what I mean? <laughs> and, and I never was. I was. I still have five moves. The point is, you know, it, it, you got to go out there and you got to give people opportunities. And they, and they can suck me off. I say that wholeheartedly and, and honestly. They're just such a fucking clown. You know, I just got to make a fucking sign, too. I just make a sign. And, and I say that whole lot of them are going to say it again. Bad wrestling exposed. And this is the sound by people who get it out of the, you know, bad wrestling exposed. Something off. That's how I feel. I believe it. 
I, and I don't, I, I, I find it, I think it's probably going to attack me tomorrow.